but LTO and NTO actually don't have this effect on aluminum. And so you're using... Talking battery here with our favorite battery expert, Ash, and we're moving through the periodic table from phosphate to lithium. And we've just talked about LTO, titanium, and now what's next in the periodic table, Ash? So LTO, because of its low energy density, has always been uh, under the radar. It hasn't been a very popular cell that's been considered by a lot of automakers or even developers for energy storage. However, what's been happening recently is we're starting to dope LTO with niobium, which is another transition metal. And what it is allowing us to do is essentially double or even close to triple the energy density of LTO while maintaining it's really good, a really high cycle life and really good safety properties. So now when you add niobium, they call it NTO then, so niobium titanium oxide, you maintain a really good cycle life, you know, 15,000, 18,000, maybe up to 20,000 cycles. You maintain really high power applications, so really fast charging rates. We're talking, you know, six minutes charging time uh, without degradation and really good ability to charge at low temperatures. So it's not yet quite as energy dense as a good NMC, I would say. But the trade-off is you're getting a battery that you can implement in very extreme applications and off-grid solutions that you don't need to worry about. You don't, you don't really need thermal management. You don't need to worry about degradation. You just put it there, it does its thing and it just keeps running. And so that's what I, what, that's what I like about it uh, because I personally have a mining background and applications in mining are very extreme and in very extreme conditions. And so they, they could use something that they don't need to worry about too much. Yeah, and if you're in the middle of nowhere in a hostile, cold environment, it's all about cost of ownership. So you wanna have a good uh, reliability, flying equipment and staff in and out for maintenance is extremely costly. So that definitely, uh, could be a good business case. Yeah, and you don't have to replace it often. So uh, one MTO battery could do the cycle life of two uh, lithium ion LFPs or NMC batteries. Now you talking about niobium here, um, and we actually in our portfolio, we have one company that is a copper niobium play in Canada. How much niobium do you need in the LTO battery? I mean, is it just a, a few percentage points or? Uh, it's a small amount. I don't think it's that significant, but it's interesting that you mentioned copper. So there's one thing I forgot to mention that's interesting. Most batteries, uh, the chemistry reacts with aluminum and it's called aluminizing or aluminum alloying, right? So you can't use aluminum current collectors. You have to use copper. And so that increases the demand for copper. Uh, but LTO and NTO actually don't have this effect on aluminum. And so you're using aluminum current collectors with these batteries, which makes it less reliant on, on copper. So that's, a, that's an interesting advantage as well.